Hello. Welcome back to Dan's Learning Curve. I'm sure some of you are wondering if I was still alive. Well, I am alive and still kicking. And behind me is still my 58 Plymouth. That still, I don't know the real cause of the lost oil pressure. Now, I'm going to insert some, how we led up to this, insert video clips and pictures and uh, to catch you up on what's going on here. And then we will continue on. I'm going to have to vacuum off the engine so I don't drop um, debris into the engine and then uh, remove the intake manifold. And there I hope I'm going to find a lifter pushed out of its bore, a bent push rod from number eight intake. It's laying in the valley. Is that what I'm going to find? I don't know. Let's find out together. Time to get the last strap on here. Minnesota, and look what I have. I think it's going to flip them around backwards, but I have current plates for my 58 Plymouth. Okay, you can tell from just years of sitting and stuff like that that there's all sorts of debris on this engine, and you can see this uh, red stuff is from the corn dryer next door. Just blows all over the place when he dries corn and stuff. It's only a little bit of the year, but it's sure kind of messy. But so what I need to do is I need to take everything off that's connected to the intake manifold. Uh, that would be the fuel line. I need to get a steel one back on there, and uh, upper radiator hose, and what else? Uh, accelerator linkage and stuff. But you can see all the garbage on top there. So. I need to get rid of that so it doesn't drop in the engine. All right. All right. I don't, you probably don't want to watch a vacuum and hear a vacuum. So I'll bring you back once I get that cleaned up. All right. We're rolling. No turning back now. Huh? All right. Some of these are going to require um, using an open end box in and stuff like that. But just incidentally, I was the last one to put these bolts in. I put these these bolts in when I was uh, around 15. I was born in 65. So, let's see now. 50, uh, 65, 75, probably 1980. I put these bolts in. And I was going to get this thing running. And uh, I actually tore this engine down. And uh, found the offending uh, piston cylinder that was pushing oil. Freed those stuck rings because my dad accidentally overheated it um, and uh, got it running again. But uh, but now, as you saw on uh, in the videos I showed you, I had to have this thing towed home from the last show I went to in Henderson. Uh, I don't remember what date it was. I'll put that. Hopefully, I'll add that in the description. But. Uh, Let's see what use a ratchet there. I had to actually run a cord out here to use the vacuum because there's no power in this shed. And uh, I ran it from the chicken house, so got power in the chicken house. This is this kind of a machine shed, equipment shed. So that's where I, my daughter Liliana helped me push, pushed it into last fall. So it's, it was out of the weather all winter, which is really nice.
hopefully I'll be able to take this uh, intake and carburetor to the car wash and uh, give it a good cleaning and uh, give it a good painting. Maybe think about that. Now, I might have overheated this thing, too, on one of my cruises. Um, it's smoking a lot again, so I may end up pulling this engine down again and see what I... Or maybe even check the clearances in the piston. My dad re overhauled this engine back in California uh, about 1968. And he bought the car for $80, you know, driving along, saw, seeing it sitting in someone's front yard, and he inquired about it. Yep, they wanted to sell it, so... $80, and fun fact, because it's an older car, they equip these transmissions in these older cars with a rear pump. And a rear pump allows the transmission to provide uh, fluid pressure. Um, pro pro the pump pr provides fluid pressure to the transmission, and that is transmitted through the torque converter. You can actually push start these cars I think it's 25 miles an hour or something like that. So it's something they got rid of. Um, oh, I don't know. Uh, early mid 60s, I think. Early to mid 60s. So this one's giving me a work run for my money here. This one's coming out hard. Get down in the comments, tell me what you like about this car. Is it the fact that it's a Plymouth? Is it the fact that it's a Plymouth 1958 Plymouth? Is it the fact that it's a forward look, uh, in the forward look class? Um, maybe you're a Christine fan, and this is uh, the same year that Christine was. Um, let's see, what else could there be? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think another thing I've thought about is, have you gone on vacations in a station wagon? What kind of vacations do you remember riding the station wagon? Now, some of your, some of them may have been a nine-seater and had the rear-facing seat. This one only is a six-seater and doesn't have the rear-facing seat. So, but I know a lot of them. They made a nine-passenger, and uh, so you may have been the lucky or the unlucky one to ride in the back seat, depending if you got car sick or not. Did you get car sick riding the back seat? Let me know. This just pop out, I think it will. Hmm. Look at that, just like that. Pop. Okay. I just emptied my phone. Uh, I'm using my phone to record this video, and I just emptied it, all the pictures, and my camera comes up a whole lot faster. Amazing, huh? Simply amazing. So once I get this oil pressure figured out, deal figured out, which I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope is a lifter sitting proud of the bore, um, then I'll be able to lower the engine back down. Right now it's sit, still sitting on blocks. You can see the right, you can see right here the 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 hose it, upper radiator hose has some stress on it. Because I raised the engine up to get the wheel pan off. And I'm not going to lower it down until I real I know that I don't have to pull that pan again. I don't think I'm going to have to, but um, I don't know. Um, I've been so confident about, um, you know, oh, this is it. This is it. This is the, um, this is the, you know, I went through the, I, I went through the pump. I thought for sure that the, Hang on the pump sheared off and I took that out and nope it looked good tang wasn't sheared off and uh this one's coming out pretty easy and then I'm going okay okay so it must be an obstruction so I, I uh, pulled the pan nope everything looked good everything was smooth yeah the pump isn't new but um still it's um still pumping oil Something I observed that I had thought back about, and I've mentioned this in other videos, was the fact that 
my cruising, that cruise, my oil pressure was lower than normal. And, uh, you know, you go, I wonder what's going on there. And, uh, you know, hindsight, you know, it's, I always say hindsight is 2015. You know, most people say 2020, and I go, no, 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 it's 2015 because, you know, um, hindsight, you get all the shoulda, woulda, coulda, even from yourself, you know, I should have done this, I could have done that, and stuff like that. And, and uh, so, you know, I thought I was going to come out with a bracket for the accelerator, for the accelerator pedal or not. Looks like it'll ride, okay. The distributor gets to stay in the block. I'll have to pull it on anyway and reset it because I, I still have the drive gear. This this goes uh, down to the oil pump and uh, drives the oil pump and the distributor. So let me put that back in. So yeah, let me know. And if you could just go drop down and give me a thumbs up and uh, just a comment and say, hey, where are you from and all that good stuff. This sure helps, uh, encourages me to make more videos. I mean, getting very few, it's kind of a bummer, you know, getting uh, very few comments and stuff like that. I know, I know, probably, probably I'm the most boring person on YouTube, but, you know. Well, I'm going to shut you off. I'm going to pull the bolts on the other side, and I'll bring you back. Hi, Apples. We interrupt this regularly scheduled program for a CAT scan. This is Apples. Can you see? Get her, get her, in, the, oh, get her in the frame. This is Apples. She's a good kitty. Um, I'm not sure why my daughter named her Apples, but um, she's just, this is, this is curious as any other cat. So say hi to Apples. Bye, Apples. Okay, this the manifold is loose. Now this is a lot of cast iron here. Let's see if I can get up there and pull it off. I have not looked underneath it yet. I just cracked it loose. Oh, I did this when I was 15. Now I'm 58. You'll get there someday. Maybe you're older than I am. I don't know. Let me know how old you are. Would you do this at your age? Okay. Oh, I've got one bolt left back here. I forgot about. I took time out to help my daughter Liliana, our daughter, um, with parallel parking and uh, uh, 90 degree backing. So. I got, I got a, what do you call it, distracted. So, this is what I was doing when she asked for help. And she is important to me, so. I don't even know if you're in frame. Are you in frame? Hopefully. I'll move the camera down here when I get this off. I'll let you see when I see. One thing nice about old cars, you can actually step through the engine bay and hit the ground. All right, I'm not gonna cheat. Okay, what do I have attached here yet? I've got... Okay. There we have it. Right there is my oil pressure loss. See the lifter? Right here. And... A broken push rod. Look at that. Huh. <laughs> I 
I'm right. I'm right. I found my oil pressure loss. All right, guys, I appreciate you tuning in and uh, following along with me to this and uh, with Tanda Pushrod and uh, get this thing going again. Have a wonderful day, and I thank you for watching.